<laughs> If you could have a guide, someone to help you tell your story, give you the tools to reach your ideal customer, lead you to living your dreams and turning a profit, would you follow it? Everyone, every passion has a place in this world, and each has the potential to be unstoppable. It's time to buckle up and tune in to your personal strategist, life purpose coach and marketing maven, Lindy Chafin Stark. Hello, 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 everyone. It's Wednesday. Day. And you are tuning in to Unstoppable. And that's how I'm feeling right now. I want that to come through over the airwaves. I want you to feel unstoppable, too, when we are done this show. And then I want you to go back and listen to all the rest of them so you can be amazing and unstoppable in everything that you do, whether it's in marketing or in life. Um, this is Wendy. Chafin Start, and I am coming to you live from Unstoppable Start Studios here in Atlanta, Georgia, and working countrywide currently, and I love it. <laughs> um, here at Unstoppable Start Studios, just to give you a little bit of my story, we provide businesses, obviously, across the country with um, digital mark and marketing, branding, um, print, social media, all sorts of getting tools and the assistance of marketing professionals, graphic designers, copywriters, um, amazing programmers, <laughs> and we provide small businesses as in general um, with amazing product that helps them grow, helps them promote their business, helps them build their presence. That is what we do here. Um, and I'm so, so very proud to be on this path. And um, just to give you a little bit of backstory, I I do this every week, come to you guys and talk to you about growing your business, the tools and just things that you can use and keep in the back of your head. You're doing your marketing if, in fact, you're doing it yourself because that's I got into this to help people. So this is my way to help anybody who wants to listen. But today I was on all with um, with a client and this is something that was making me so nervous and my voice is still kind of shaky over it. I know my gut is because it's so hard to unwind that spring after you've gotten, <laughs> gotten so tight. But um, on the call, I had the marketing director of the company who I'm working for. So she's essentially my direct boss. And then I had the management company their executives, and then I had the owner of the specific properties. And the owner was asking questions, which I'm not good at answering, like being confronted by them. It's not my strong suit. Um, I'm better at, yes, but let me get back to you. Apparently, unless I have headphones on, like I do right now. And he was asking me these questions. And I was able to treat him like I would treat one of you, a listener, a very valued listener, um, and answer his questions. And in the, the end of my answer, say, was that helpful? Is that helpful? Did I answer your question? And the response was consistent. Yes, that's very helpful. Thank you. So... I am so grateful for those moments because it truly shows me um, because I don't always hear from you guys, but when, I, <laughs> when I'm one on one with somebody like that and they come back and say, yes, that was helpful. I know what I'm giving you every week is that kind of helpful, too. So I am just about to explode with gratitude over that conversation. I am so excited. But we're not here to talk about my story today. We're here to talk about your story and your email marketing, to be more specific. So... Let's get on with it. <laughs> Email marketing is one of those things that sounds so bland, doesn't it? It's like one piece of a damn puzzle. Um, and, yeah, it's an email. Who cares? Can't I just send an email? No, you cannot. Don't think you can. It don't work that way. Um, <laughs> so email clients. Uh, have a way of looking at emails that you send from your email client, which is that thing 
on your desktop, we'll call it mail at this point because uh, there's so many. And if it sees what looks like a marketing email coming from a generic email client, you will get kicked from a system. It will automatically see you as spam and you will not be able to get, your message will not get through. That's point number one. Point number two, if you have not been given permission to email them, it is not allowed. It's a no-no. I will go so far as to call it illegal, especially when it comes to marketing emails. It's kind of like that um, no-call list, you know, with all those fun digital marketing calls that you get and you can't stand them. I can't stand them. Can you stand them? I can't stand them. Um, that's the reason I created the no-call list was so you could say, I didn't sign up for this. Email's the same way now. So, and it's been that way for a while, just so you know. Now, if you're working with a client um, and you have their email in your system, I don't, I don't work by the practice that if it's a client, they have to specifically check a box and sign up for mail. My clients expect emails from me. So they're on my list and I email to them. And if they don't want to be on my list, all they have to do is ask. Um, a number of the email, automated email system I use, which would be things like Constant Contact, MailChimp, Infusionsoft, and that's kind of what we're talking today. Um, those guys, like up an automated campaign in Infusionsoft, they will actually kick out an initial email that says, if you don't want to be part of this, click here. So if somebody, um, say if somebody clicks on a link in a, in a landing page and your message is maybe a little vague or a little convoluted to get them to do that click instead of just being and forthright, you know, we've already had that conversation. Be honest, because otherwise you're getting leads you don't want. And people are spending your money and you don't want them to be spent. <laughs> so be honest about your messaging. If they come into a landing page, download this ebook now. By doing so, here's a note, here's a little checkbox, whatever. By doing this, you are signing up to receive further emails, information, whatever from this company, okay? So it's important to keep that in the back of your mind as far as the technical where and how to's as email goes, okay? <clears throat> but that's still, that's just kind of some broad stroke things to keep in the back of your mind. Um, we're really in here talking about how to make your email stand out some best practices. We'll get into some best practices in the latter half of the show um, when it comes to your email marketing in 2019. Okay. So email marketing is like every other piece of collateral that you put at. It is part of your brand. It's part of your brand. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a little bit of stat. For every dollar spent on email marketing, a company can expect $38 of earning in return. We got that? <laughs> Don't you love it? When I make you stop and think, did you hear that? Yes, you heard that correctly. For every dollar spent on email marketing, a company can expect $38 of earning in return. So if you're paying for an email client like Constant Contact, Chimp, Infusionsoft, they all have their varying degrees of um, relevance in this scenario. Then for every dollar that you spend, you can, spec you can expect $38 of earning. Okay, that's great. So will you use email marketing? If you're not, I think you probably should. Um, email marketing is the result of you building your list and just We've said it before. Your list is your most valuable asset. It's your book of business. All right. Um, where are we going? 
Imagine this. When it comes to your brand email marketing, your customers expect your same voice, your same key messages, your same brand promise, you know, all that stuff we've talked about before. They expect all of this stuff in your email marketing just like it is, because it is part of your collateral, whether it's um, updated content, relevant content, it doesn't matter what kind of content it has. The delivery method has to look, feel like it's coming from you. That's a critical part of the scenario. So <laughs> if, if your clients get your first email and it is not branded and it's just a generic black and white, ugly old email, then cue scary music, they're not going to click through it. Okay, so you never want to lose a chance to build a long-term relationship. Now, all that said, you and I, we get marketing emails every single day. And one of the clear pieces that we're going to talk about is don't over email. Don't do it. You spend your potential customer's time. You are just irritating a lot of people to where they want to unsubscribe. And if your unsubscribe polls aren't solid and they aren't perceivably able to unsubscribe, then that's, create, that's going to create a problem for you. So, again, all stuff to have in the back of your mind. But let's go back to um, branding in your emails real quick. So it's critical when you build a, brand, a branded email to start with the base. You have your basically your brand cheat sheet. We'll just call it that. It's got your logo, it's got your colors, it's got your fonts, um, it's got your website link, it's got any key messages, your brand plus. Okay. Here's all this information in one document that you can use over and over and over again when you are creating any piece of collateral, whether it's digital email, whether it's a rack card, whether it's a brochure or a flyer, you've got all this information. Make sure that that information is translated, okay? Make sure that people recognize you. That brand recognition is what you're going for with your marketing. You want your marketing your, your marketing is how, how people see you. It's how they perceive you. They find you. It's not necessarily a conversion. It's not a sale. But it's a crucial part of reaching that sale point. So you want to make sure that it's got its tux on. It's dressed its absolute best. And it's ready for potential clients. Kind of a date night thing. You know, you want to look your best. You don't want to look like you've got the floppy T-shirt on. So we're going to go to break. I know it's already going so fast. Um, when we come back, we're going to talk about uh, maximizing your branded email campaigns. We'll be right back. We all wish we had a few extra hours and a few less things to do in our hurried days. By tuning into Unstoppable, Hosted by Life Purpose Coach and Marketing Maven, Lindy Chafin Start, you'll hear success stories of how other entrepreneurs have uncovered their passions and learned to live a balanced, purposeful life. You'll receive tips and tools to market and grow your business, wrangle the chaos, and design the life you've dreamt of. Learn how to be unstoppable by tuning in to InspiredChoicesNetwork.com every Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern, 12 p.m. Central Time, 11 a.m. Mountain Time, and 10 a.m. Pacific Time. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com.
This is Unstoppable with Life Purpose Coach and Marketing Maven, Lindy Chafin-Start. If you have a question about marketing your small business or finding balance as an entrepreneur or you're just trying to get up the courage to do your own thing, let Lindy know. You can call in the U.S. 815-880-8255, Canada 613-800-8736, or Skype us at Inspire Choices Network. Now, back to Unstoppable. Hey, we're back, everybody. Okay. <clears throat> Let's talk about how we're going to maximize our branded email campaigns. I know I'm just jumping back in, but, you know, some days you just have to jump right back in. So before your customer opens their first email, here are some things. Make sure you have a thank you page set up. You can persist, uh, present a consistent brand right out of the gate by creating a page for new subscribers when they sign up for your email list. You've gotten these before. You you enter your first name and your email address. You hit enter, and what shows up is the thank you so much for signing up. Check your inbox in just a few minutes, and we'll have some information there for you, right? Um, make sure this page has the same design as your site, your landing page, your website, how, however this campaign is um, generated, trying to think who's in my head right now um, she has she's brilliantly used Infusionsoft and her web her landing page um, oh if you want to know email me I'll let you know I can't her name's not coming I'll try to remember it by the end of the show anyway she has integrated these two things seamlessly she's done it in a very elegant way and it's not choppy it's just really well put together so um, anyway Make sure your page, uh, the thank you page, has the same design as your site, including the colors, fonts, logo, visual style, and tone of voice. It's plain and simple, just like we were talking about. This is part of your brand. Okay. Um, the inbox. Your email can be branded without even being opened. The sender. The email sender is your company name so that your customer knows who is connecting with them. Now, if your personal name is your company, cool. If your company name is not your personal name, cool. They just be upfront about it. You know, don't be all fly customer service or lead or, you know, whatever. Um, your subject line. Use either your company name or the name of the newsletter so that your client recognizes what content they are receiving. So in my case, it would be, and starts marketing tips you can use from Unstoppable Start. Make okay. And a snippet. Give your customers a tantalizing little piece of the email content so they want to open it. Just a little piece. Just like I did. Marketing tips you can use. That's a snippet. Or it could be email marketing tips you can use today, like you're doing right now. Huh, look at that. Simple that is. All right. So once your customer has the content, how do you want that to be presented? Well, your tone of voice and persona are huge. Think about your brand identity. Repeat performance here. What makes you stand out? Is it a friendly and comedic wit? Is it your professional attentiveness? Is it your local charm and unique flair? Your tone needs to be consistent across every pub so that it represents your brand fully. This makes you recognizable, reliable, and trustworthy. We've agreed on that before. It's all part of your brand, and you just have to keep that front and center when you're getting any marketing for your company. It's not always easy to do. I mean, there's some days when you want to go off on a tangent, and there's some days it's okay. Um, by example, I will say if you were doing, if you had created an automated email campaign, here's one of my many recommendations with automated email campaigns. 
Infusion Pains and Infusion Soft. Yes, you're welcome, Infusion Soft. This is your plug for today. Um, Infusion Soft has kind of mastered the way that in your headspace. Um, you create a campaign. It has landing. People sign up to receive the emails and say that you wanted to go ahead and create marketing for 12 months. No matter when that person is up, you want them to get an email a month for 12 months. Okay. So you set up your email. Well, in this campaign, actually put stops in that prompt you to send a postcard instead of an email so that now they're not only getting your brand in their inbox, they're getting it in their mailbox. Okay, now here's another little quick tip on that. Say you've automated campaign set up. Well, instead of doing every single email with the same branded look and feel, take a step back and make that person that asked to receive emails special. Send them, even if it's part of the automated campaign, send them an email that looks like it's a memo from your desk. Hey, it's Lindy. I just wanted to let you know, really, I came across this tip today and thought you'd be interested in it. I came across X today and thought you'd be interested in it. Let that tip be valuable because that's what your customer wants. Value, no matter who they are, whether they're an existing customer, a potential customer, a random stranger that signed information from you, doesn't matter. You're not going to convert that lead if you're not giving you. Okay, so those are two two tips for you, inbox and mailbox and then branded, and then a little part. Hey, how you doing? Okay. Tone of voice and persona. We've talked about that. Thank you. Um, regardless, this is a super secret tip. Regardless of your brand voice, customers don't hear it consistently. It won't be effective. So provide content regularly to keep your audience engaged. That's where automated email campaigns came from. Um, they say it on average, and this is just a very general average, seven emails to convert a potential client into a full-fledged lead. But it's not a potential client through to lead through to conversion. It's it's just confidence building. They need to know you can be trusted. <laughs> so that's person from the internet to, I think I need to give this person a call. This is good information. So going mated scenario, you might not want to stretch out an automated campaign over 12 months. Or if you do, you might want to supplement it, you know, with other little offshoot emails from time to time. But again, don't or email. Okay, we'll make sure I'm getting that in there. Solution-based content. <laughs> Bill Gates once said, if you show people the problems and you show them the solutions, they will be moved to act. We've talked about it before, and I talk about it with every client. If you have, and you see it all too, don't let me fool you. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw my pillow out for this one commercials you see on TV from my pillow. It's washable, it's weight, it can be packed for travel, it's going to correct the way your head lays so that you don't wake up feeling like you've been tossed in a dryer over and over again all night. I mean, my problem is I'm not sleeping well and you just solved it. And not only that, you gave me a pillow I can chill with and I can wash. <laughs> Like, who wants anything more than that? So that's solution-based <laughs> email. But use your unique brand presence to be a resource for your clients. That's one of their problems. 
We've talked about audience development before. Susie Q7. Melissa's 17. Rhonda's 34. Jack is 55. What kind of problems are each of these people having? And how can your product solve that for them? Right? You're, write the novel. This is your business. This is how you do it. Okay. Um, just an example. If your daughter, who has the brand identity as a scrappy, calm, and persistent partner, build an email solving a client's problem in a resourceful way. So as many pups in the beginning levels of struggle with teething, you might solve the problems with a DIY teething toy that owners on a budget can build and use. Present the material in, a, in brand by keeping the voicing, the visual cycle, and the email template consistent. Okay? Just gives you another good example. Yep, number two. You can segment your audience in order to deliver content that better matches the needs, desires, and behaviors of your customer. For the dog trainer, a few ways the audience could be segmented include breed, dog, training level. This way, you have the opportunity to provide information useful and relevant to every audience member every time. We'll go back to that wonderful email provider that you're working with, Constant Contact, MailChimp. I'm not just naming three. There's more than three, but I'm naming the top three, Infusionsoft. What's your form look like? Are you a dog trainer? When somebody signs up to receive tips, are they able to specify? Give them the opportunity to or not. That's up to them. Let them make that call. But at least give them the ID too. Don't make everything a required option when you're setting up a form. Just all right. And finally, on this, because I want to get on to you know the 2019 best practices, the email body. The content itself is not enough to keep your email brand. You need to make sure that the template, logo, font, colors, buttons, the site all match and create a presentation of your company in the inbox. We've already, we're going to cover that. I'm going to dream because you need to keep that front and center. If your content is great brand, your customers will want to use it, share it, and react to it. What is that? They're growing your business and you're following for you? Yeah. Give them the option. I bring a call to action, which tells your users exactly what to do with the email content you gave them. Nine times out of ten, at the bottom of that email, you can say, think somebody else might be interested in that? Please share. That's all you have to do. You can even make it an automatic button. <laughs> all right. We're going to go to our second break. You are listening to Unstoppable on the Inspired Choices Network. I'm excited to come to you today talking about email marketing, and we'll be right back. We all wish we had a few extra hours and a few less things to do in our hurried days. By tuning into Unstoppable, hosted by Life Purpose Coach and Marketing Maven, Lindy Chafin Start. You'll hear success stories of how other entrepreneurs have uncovered their passions and learned to live a balanced, purposeful life. You'll receive tips and tools to market and grow your business, wrangle the chaos, and design the life you've dreamt of. Learn how to be unstoppable by tuning in to InspiredChoicesNetwork.com every Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern, 12 p.m. Central Time, 11 a.m. Mountain Time, and 10 a.m. Pacific Time. This is Unstoppable with Life Purpose Coach and Marketing Maven, Lindy Chafin Start. If you have a question about marketing your small business or finding balance as an entrepreneur, or you're just trying to get up the courage to do your own thing, let Lindy know. You can call in the U.S. 815-880-8255, Canada 613-800-8736, or Skype us at Inspire Choices Network. Now, back to Unstoppable. And welcome back. Okay. Before we get into best practices for 2019, uh, I want to you to give us a call here at the studio so we can answer any questions. If you have any questions you want me to answer or if you just want to take advantage of a 
you know, free little consultation, um, visit my website, which is unstoppablestart.com. At the bottom of the page, there's this little contact form. You can fill that out and um, we'll plan a time to get together about what your marketing needs or questions are. I am here to help you. That is my goal. Um, all right. Now, back on to these best practices. So if you already have one of these fancy and wonderful automated email clients, vendors, providers, whatever you want to call it, um, are you using their A-B testing? I know you've seen you've been in the back end. <laughs> Tee hee. No, I'm just kidding. I know you've, you've seen it. If you've created an email, this is the opportunity to create an A-B test. Um, that A-B test is a great way to kind of get to know your audience if you're working with a generic sort of uh, list and how they react, what they react to. So it's important to know that you can change element in email, um, call to action buttons, headline copy, things like that. Um, trying to think of a good example. Let me kind of talk my way through this, and I'm sure one will come to mind. Um, you want to take a small potential of your total list, depending on your list size, and half of that list email A and the other half email B. Okay. After a solid 24 hours, go back and look in at your results and see which email got the most opens, clicks, unsubscribes. Any element within your email can be tested. So it depends on what you're trying to fix about email. So say you have low open rates and you want to test the subject line. Well, if you have low click through rates, maybe change in the body copy or the call to action button or, I mean, it's one of those things that allows you to play. Um, and the insight is not going to be relevant to you unless you get excited about it. So if you're a small business owner and email marketing is just, it's like that one more thing I've got to do this week and you don't have the but hire a professional to do it for you. Let me tell you, it can be done pretty inexpensively. Um, if you are doing it yourself and you're not excited about these results, then don't worry with it. Just don't do it. Because all you're going to do is look at the results and go, huh? And scratch your head. You don't want. What you want to do is go into it excited to see what and what didn't. I used this headline on here with this call to action. I used this headline over here with this call to action. Which one worked better with the content? Or I used this content, this, this, you know. Just, just, you know, move on. If you could see me using my hands, you would see that I'm just moving stuff around on a board. <laughs> that's how it works. Okay, so that's A-B testing. Take advantage of it if you've, if you've got the bandwidth to um, it's just one of those really fun and important to help you get to know Susie Q and Jack and Rhonda and Tiffany or Melissa all that better. So, all right, imagery. You now we've talked about imagery that's to your brand, and we're going to implore you to stay on brand. Um, but the thing you want to do are use too many images. And if you're using images, make sure that you save them down. <laughs> Do you not know what that means? I'll admit. Make sure that you save them down so they're not hard to for the mail clients to download. If they take too long to download, people aren't going to be real interested in reading what's going on. Okay, so to save down an image, if you are just a novice and not a designer, you can go on your computer to um, a photo editor sort of program. And typically when you go in to edit photos, it will allow you to resize them 
and you can save them for email, web, print. You can do this in all the design programs as well, um, but I don't anticipate that every designer <laughs> does their own design, and if they do, they're doing it in Word or Publisher, which I don't recommend. So if you're doing that, call me. Okay. So you, using images is a great way to connect with your audience, to draw them in, to, you know, make it interesting. Video video is too, but let's not go down that path today. Um, but you can, it's not only images that you can use in an email marketing piece. You can also use video. Keep that in the back of your mind. Make it sweet. You don't want to lose their attention. But if you've got it, if you want to make it, your the, your younger audience is going to be more engaged by video than they are imagery. But older folks will be more engaged by imagery. Not having any sort of imagery might turn them off depending on where they are in the pain. Okay. So images that are too large are going to slow everything down. So we talked about resizing. That creates a poor user experience. You don't want to slow them down. Um, too many images is a bad idea because it will land your email in a spam folder. Something to think about. Um, some users, especially from tech companies, have automatic image download turned off in their inbox. So if there's an image in your email, it won't download automatically. So they would have to click it. You might even have this set up in your inbox. I used to have it up in mine. Um, you have to click show images. So if, <laughs> if that scenario occurs, you want to make sure that you have a strong headline that will make them want to go into, um, into the email and actually. So think carefully about your headlines and your imagery and how they work together and make sure that one of those audience folks that you've developed has an email client that does not allow it. So when they look at your headline, they go, I want to know more about that. Okay. All right. Relevancy. And again, this is one of those things that I can't say enough about. Um, it's a, it's one of those harder um, best practices to follow. It all depends on the amount of data you capture, which is why I preach, give them the opportunity. If you have a sign-up form and you're trying to create multiple levels or multiple targets, make sure you ask questions that are going to allow you to push relevant data to the correct people. Otherwise, people might get turned off. Um, Yes, it can be annoying <laughs> or hard to have different content for different audiences, but depending on how many you have, um, it's worth it. Remember, every dollar spent on email marketing, a company can expect $8 of earning in return. So if you don't feel like you personally have the bandwidth to do it because you have to be your customer's number one, then by all means, hire somebody to write that content for you. Provide them with the wonderful brand sheet so they know what to say. And voila, then all you have to do is program the email. Well, okay, you can do that. They can do that. But if you don't have the bandwidth to do that either, call a marketing professional and get it set up for you. Now, I don't want to get too far off of images before I tell you this one last little secret back end tip. Make sure that your image file name, it's kind of like a website, think of it that way. Make sure that your image um, file name is called what it is. I mean, it's not its original like image IMG 4380. Make it boy throws ball. <laughs> boy throws ball wheel. Um, and then 
be sure to go back through and call alternate text for that image so that you're being fair to your entire audience and that includes people who um, cannot see your email. They're having a computer read it to them and you want to make sure that computer knows what that image is other than IMG 4380. Um, so you want the image name and the alt text relevant to the email that you're sending out. Okay. A website that affects your SEO, but on an email, it just makes the end user. And you want to make that, you know, a really experience for everyone. All right. Can't believe it, folks, but I'm going to go ahead and go to this last break and breathe for a second. <laughs> So that I come back and we can finish this show uh, strong and you can walk away with information that you go smack mad. I didn't know all that. She's unstoppable and now so am I. Um, so we're going to go to break and when we come back, we'll finish our conversation about marketing best practices you can use in 2019. We'll be right back. We all wish we had a few extra hours and a few less things to do in our hurried days. By tuning into Unstoppable, hosted by life purpose coach and marketing maven, Lindy Chafin Start, you'll hear success stories of how other entrepreneurs have uncovered their passions and learned to live a balanced, purposeful life. You'll receive tips and tools to market and grow your business, wrangle the chaos, and design the life you've dreamt of. Learn how to be unstoppable by tuning in to InspiredChoicesNetwork.com every Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern, 12 p.m. Central Time, 11 a.m. Mountain Time, and 10 a.m. Pacific Time. This is Unstoppable with Life Purpose Coach and Marketing Maven, Lindy Chafin Start. If you have a question about marketing your small business or finding balance as an entrepreneur, or you're just trying to get up the courage to do your own thing, let Lindy know. You can call in the U.S. 815-880-8255, Canada 613-800-8736, or Skype us at Inspire Choices Network. Now, back to Unstoppable. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Oh, my gosh. So this has just been a jam-packed day. <laughs> Jam back day um, with everything you could ever possibly want to know. Not really, but a lot of information you might want to know about email marketing. Um, I hope you guys know how grateful I am to be here with you today. And um, it's just such an incredible journey to be able to share all of this knowledge with you. Um, and be so excited to share it. It just makes my heart sing. So, but that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about your email marketing. So we've talked about um, call to actions in the past, uh, also referred to as CTAs, um, CTA buttons. It, it can be a text. It doesn't have to be a button. It's just more, it's kind of in your face and um, calls to action need to be solid, strong, and relevant, but only have one, especially in your email. <laughs> um, if the intention of your email is to get your audience to say, register for a webinar, um, it wouldn't make a whole lot of sense to offer them a link to your site before they've registered. It's the hierarchy thing. We've talked about this in um, SEO, you know, your headline, your header text hierarchy, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Chances are they'll click on your website, look around, forget to register for the webinar, and then leave your website. <laughs> you don't want them to do that. So um, 
make sure every link, with the exception of your unsubscribe link, you've got to give them the opportunity to do that. It's not fair if you don't. You're not playing fair. Um, links to the page to register for the webinar. Some of you might do webinars. Some of you might not. Some of you might not do webinars, and you still might not know that. <laughs> sure, your call to action is uh, it. Don't. It's the only one. I'm not saying I'll put it in one place. That's not. Don't don't misinterpret. I'm saying it's the only one. Okay, so you can start out with a really strong headline. 2019 email marketing tips webinar starts at two right here. Okay, there's call to action number one, but why register if I really don't know what those marketing tips are? Okay, you get into your body copy. Well, this is what we're going to talk about in the webinar. Bullet, 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 register now. Okay. Cool, still not captured that one. If you're suffering from, let's discuss the problems. Uh, low email open rates, this, that, and the other. Here's how we can solve that. Register now. <laughs> this is starting to make sense to you? That's how all that flow works. So it can be more than one call to action button. It has to be the same call to action. You saw me repeat that. Register now, register now, register now. Okay, then at the bottom, footer, subscribe button, link to website, learn more about me here, you know, but you want to give people the opportunity to do what they are supposed to do before you get to all that. Okay, Whew. take a deep breath, we're getting there. <laughs> Once the users have completed the desired action, register now, and link to other offers, website, relevant pieces of content. It's all good. All right, and the last point, and I'm going to say this 100 times in the next however many minutes I've got left, uh, death over email, please. If you love your customers, if you love your potential customers, if you really want them in business, don't send people stuff every single day. Forget every two hours during their de that day. Gosh, who's got time for that? You have these guys. You have these guys in your inbox every single day. Do they drive you crazy? Yes. Sometimes even the ones I get from week to week make me crazy because it's not, I mean, I realize that I signed up to receive this, but you're not drawn down to what it is I'm interested in. <laughs> Do not over email. So you're just sending me like, hey, you might have moved on to other things and you'd be offering other things. Well, it might be in your best interest to give people the opportunity. Would you like to learn more about this new offering, if you would, click here. It takes them to a website. If you're not ready to commit today, but you'd like future tips and tricks about this particular offering or would like to be made aware of sales for this particular product, we don't want to over email you. So please click here to amend your contact form. Click here to resign up so that you're put into this group. Be honest. Be upfront. Tell them what you're doing instead of just bombarding them with email over and over and over again. It's exhausting. For all of you who are out there with autumn campaigns and multiple offerings, I hope you're getting this message. It's going to send your unsubscribe rates through the roof. And for those of us who've tried to unsubscribe and we've gotten frustrated, we just block your email or we put it into a goes directly to junk because we're tired of hearing it. And that makes us miss relevant opportunities that we really might be interested in. It's fun to kind of look at it from the consumer side and the producer side, right? <laughs> so that's, God. 
you don't want to ruin your brand's reputation because you're overdoing it or you're not asking the right questions. So be careful. That's all I'm going to say. Just be careful about that. Um, so that's email marketing in its nutshell and some tips to carry with you throughout the year. Um, I hope it's been beneficial and I hope you will take this information and go forward and use it. Why? Uh, again, if you have questions about any of this, feel free to visit my website at unstoppablestart.com. Um, I am in the process of putting all of this into practice and put into information that you can have in front of you instead of just a podcast. So if you're interested in that, just sign up. Send me a note. Uh, Either way, I'll put you on my list. There's something in particular you want to know, let me know. I am here for you. I'm here to answer questions. And I will be back next week. (laughs) I don't know what we're talking about next week. Hmm. We shall see. I'm sure it'll have something to do with marketing. What do you think? And for the rest of this week, I am going to go forth and continue to grow my business. And I hope you continue to grow yours. It's a great joy, again, to have this opportunity to be here with you. Um, Email marketing is just one of the many avenues that you can use to grow your business. It doesn't have to be expensive. Um, It does have to be done well and done respectfully and done honestly. And uh, if you don't have the bandwidth to do it yourself, and I use that term often, bandwidth just means the energy and time to put into it, then reach out to a marketing professional. have to be me. There are lots of us. And uh, until next week, you guys go forth and be unstoppable. Thank you for being Inspired Choices Network's most valuable asset and for tuning in to Unstoppable. Host Lindy Chafin Start will return next Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern, 12 p.m. Central Time, 11 a.m. Mountain Time, and 10 a.m. Pacific Time with more valuable tips to support you and your small business. Until then, 